welcome to the second in a series of tutorials that I am going to be posting. In this tutorial, I will be covering custom and three-dimensional particle emitters. So, the first step in creating a custom particle emitter is to make your particle. So, in order to do that, I'm going to go under my file browser and I'm just going to grab some image. In this case, it's an image of some glass shards. Now, I think it's a little small, so we're going to press and hold Shift on the keyboard and drag one of these corners to scale it up. But we don't want to see the entire image. We just want one little shard. So we're going to select our Bezier mask, and we're going to do an outline of one of these shards you can use whichever one you want, or if you happen to find another image, you can use that. I'll be posting the image on the YouTube channel. You can copy it from there. And so now you can see we just have this for the entire 300 frames. So now that we have our image with its mask, we're going to want to change the anchor point. So you're going to click on this button here. Hold down until a drop down menu appears. We're going to want to select anchor point and we're going to want to move that into the center of our shard. Go back under that menu and set it to transform. Now we have our particle, so we need it to be emitted. We're going to go over here and it's going to say create a particle emitter. And if you like to use key commands, you can just hit E on your keyboard. So you saw how it got a little bit blurry here, and you're going to see that those blurs become many thousand shards. Okay, so while that's really nice, we're trying to get the effect that we just blew up something made of glass. So in order to change this, you're going to select your emitter, and you're going to go under Inspector. Next, you're going to want to set your birth rate to zero. You're going to see that eliminated everything. However, you're going to set your initial number to as high as you want it. The slider only goes up to 100, but if you click on the number and drag up, you can make it as high as you want. In this case, I'll go for about 250. So you can see the one shard which then becomes many, and they just move out in a circle. So we're going to want to change a few parameters here. We're going to want to check this box that says Additive Blend. You can see how it just became white. Well, that's because the areas with the densest level of particles are the brightest. So I think we might want to tone down our particles slightly. So we've got a nice little shock wave going here. So I think we could use a little bit more life because I think the particles are dying too quickly. And it doesn't really look all that realistic. So we're going to select angle. We can make these things whatever we want. Give it some randomness. Give it some spin. Give that some randomness. And then you're going to want to click this triangle next to Opacity Over Lifetime. And you're going to select this and just click on the white towards the end and on the right. And at this point, you're going to want the opacity to be zero. So now, we have our explosion. Particles move outwards, spinning. And as they get further and further away, they fade out. Now this still isn't that realistic, so we're going to want to add some speed and some speed randomness. The randomness will mean that they move at different rates and thus aren't just one complete circle. So skimming through this, you can see we have all of our nice shards moving outwards, but they still don't move out fast enough, so we can make our speed a little bit higher. So now we have all these nice shards moving away. Now if I wanted to make this 3D, first I might bring it into the middle, 
And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to check this box up here that says 3D. It's under emitter controls. So that added in a few things. You are probably going to want to leave it on in local 3D so that your computer doesn't spend six hours trying to render. So now it gives it a bit more of a 3D effect. You can see some particles come towards you while others go away. So if we just play that, it's still moving a bit slow. If this was an actual explosion, it would be moving much, much faster. So let's give it a little more speed on that. See how that looks. Even that's still a bit slow, maybe uh, make the randomness a bit less. So it looks pretty good right now. And you can play with all these settings, however you like them. So let's say that this wasn't just some point in space. Let's call it a box. This will probably look pretty weird. Yeah, that didn't really do much of anything, so maybe we'll make it a rectangle. So now, the particles start out in a rectangle instead of at a point. Let's say we wanted that to be more of a rectangle and not a square. We would just change these settings, and boom. You've got yourself a custom and 3D particle emitter. You can play with any setting you want. You can change whatever particle you're using. But just remember, when you want to make a particle emitter, you have to hit this button over here. Or press E on your keyboard. 